We're counting down the seven mega projects that prove Iraq is building something so massive, it will reshape the entire Middle East. With over $70 billion at stake, 2 billion cubic feet of gas seized from the flames each day, and a 1,200 kilometer trade corridor bypassing Iran to connect Gulf Energy straight to Europe, these projects do more than rebuild, they redraw the region's power map. From gas complexes that could have fueled Germany for a decade, to desert cities aiming to outscale Dubai, each entry balances breathtaking ambition with corruption trials, militia sabotage, and geopolitical standoffs. Which build truly shocks the world the most? The countdown begins now with number seven. Number seven, the Basra Gas Company expansion flips Iraq's greatest energy scandal into a new source of power. For 30 years, oil fields in Basra torched away $200 billion in natural gas, enough to keep Germany's lights on for a decade. Today, a $9 billion processing complex captures up to 2 billion cubic feet daily, already running at 80% capacity and fueling 15 million homes. This shift slashes Iraq's dependence on Iranian electricity by a third and opens the door to $4 billion in annual gas exports. But the scandal that wasted $200 billion for three decades reveals the true cost of corruption. Militia sabotage and $2 billion in ongoing investigations still threaten to derail the transformation. Number 6. The New Baghdad Administrative City aims to rewrite Iraq's future with a $45 billion plan for a capital larger than Dubai. Designed for 6 million residents, this desert metropolis will centralize every government ministry and reshape the country's administrative core. The skyline centerpiece, the Zaha Hadid-designed Central Bank Tower, signals a new era of ambition and national pride. Construction is already generating half a million jobs, and the project promises to streamline governance after years of chaos. Yet only 15% stands completed as the budget balloons, with audit reports exposing $8 billion in inflated contracts and procurement abuses. International lenders have pulled out, and protests from displaced farmers echo across the site. But massive corruption has turned the dream into a scandal threatening to stall Iraq's most ambitious urban project before it can deliver on its promise. Number 5. The Mesopotamia Expressway slices through Iraq's heartland with a 650-kilometer highway linking Baghdad to Basra at a cost of $3 billion. Designed for speeds up to 120 kilometers per hour, this corridor promises to cut the journey from 8 hours to just 4 connecting two of Iraq's largest cities for the first time since 2003 without a sectarian checkpoint. The engineering challenge is formidable. Dozens of bridges span marshlands that once acted as natural barriers, each one a potential weak point for sabotage. Construction has already created 25,000 jobs, but progress remains locked at 60% as security costs spiral. Tribal militias demand illegal tolls, and ISIS remnants target crews, turning every kilometer into a battleground. The expressway was meant to stitch together a fractured nation, yet the road to unity is paved with extortion and fear. But tribal militias and ISIS remnants turn every kilometer into a battleground, threatening to unravel the promise of national connection. Number 4. The Karbala, Najaf High Speed Rail is Iraq's boldest play for cultural influence in the region. Stretching 70 kilometers between two of the world's holiest Shia cities, this $2.1 billion electrified line is engineered for speeds of 200 kilometers per hour, transforming a journey that once took hours into a swift, modern link. The stations are designed to handle two million pilgrims each year, promising to funnel billions into Iraq's religious tourism sector and support 8,000 jobs. At full operation, the project could generate $1.5 billion in annual revenue, positioning Iraq as a rival to Iran for the title of Shia Pilgrimage Center. Yet, the corridor runs through a minefield of tribal land disputes and environmental protests. Legal filings stack up in parliament as local landowners and religious authorities clash with government expropriation orders. 
environmental groups warn of habitat loss and water scarcity, while Iranian-backed militias eye the project with suspicion, fearing a shift in religious tourism away from Tehran. Construction remains just 35% complete, stalled by a tangle of lawsuits and community resistance. But land disputes and Iranian pressure threaten the pilgrimage revolution, casting a shadow over Iraq's ambitions to reclaim spiritual leadership. Number 3. The Basra – Herbal Strategic Pipeline – Promises to redraw Iraq's energy map with a 700-kilometer artery linking Basra's oil fields to Erbil and the Kurdish North. Engineered to move up to 2 million barrels per day, the line weaves through three climate zones and crosses 15 rivers, armored against sabotage and built for resilience. The stakes are enormous. By cutting Kurdish oil trucking by 80%, the pipeline could erase decades of costly, insecure road transport. For the first time, Arab and Kurdish leaders negotiated a direct energy partnership, with Ankara pressing for a transparent revenue split and tariff regime. But the real contest is political, not technical. After the Kurdish independence referendum in 2017, Baghdad, Erbil, and Ankara hammered out secretive power-sharing formulas, each side wary of ceding control. Sunni communities and Turkish officials now demand a greater share of pipeline revenues, transforming every negotiation into a high-stakes standoff. Despite 70% of the route reportedly built, the project is frozen by political gridlock and competing demands. But Kurdish independence dreams and Turkish opposition create a geopolitical minefield, leaving Iraq's most ambitious oil link stalled just short of completion. Number 2. The Development Road Superhighway is Iraq's audacious bid to rewrite the map of global trade. Stretching 1,200 kilometers from the new Grand Fa port on the Gulf to the Turkish frontier, this corridor is engineered to bypass Iran entirely and promises to funnel up to 20% of all Asia to Europe freight. The ambition is staggering. 47 bridges and 12 tunnels must be carved through marshes, deserts, and mountains, with southern sections already seeing heavy machinery at work. The government touts a 10-day shipping advantage over the Suez Canal, a claim that, if realized, could shift the center of Eurasian commerce and put Iraq at the crossroads of continents. Backed by a $17 billion budget and a patchwork of Gulf, Turkish, and Asian investment, Turkey, Qatar, and the UAE have all signed on, with China's Belt and Road Initiative looming in the background. This project is more than a road. It's a statement of intent. At peak, construction is set to employ 100,000 Iraqis, while up to 30,000 families face displacement as the route cuts through towns and farmland. The stakes are geopolitical as much as economic a direct challenge to Iranian and Chinese dominance of regional logistics. Yet the road north is anything but secure. PKK insurgents have ambushed survey teams, Iranian-backed tribal groups sabotage equipment, and the northern alignment remains stalled by violence and land seizures. Southern 40% of the corridor is under construction, but the rest is a battleground of competing interests and unresolved security threats. But PKK insurgents and Iranian pressure turn construction into warfare, leaving Iraq's most ambitious trade corridor hanging between promise and peril. And finally, in first place, the Grand Fa port complex stands as Iraq's most audacious bid to rewrite the balance of power on the Gulf. Anchored by a Guinness-certified breakwater stretching over 14 kilometers, now the world's longest, this $2.6 billion megaport is engineered to handle 99 berths and 35 million tons of cargo annually. The ambition is clear. Transform a marshy backwater into the Singapore of the Middle East, a trade nexus capable of generating $8 billion in yearly revenue and employing 50,000 Iraqis. South Korea's Daewoo leads the construction driving pilings deep into unstable silt and dredging 18-meter channels to accommodate the world's largest container ships. Phase 1 is already operating at 60% of planned capacity, but the promise of full-scale operations is shadowed by spiraling costs. 
MarineWorks alone have run $800 million over budget. With supply chain shocks and security risks inflating every contract, yet the engineering is only half the battle. Kuwait has taken Iraq to international court, arguing the port encroaches on its maritime claims and threatens free navigation to its own Mubarak al-Kabir facility. The legal filings and diplomatic protests have forced Iraq to redesign northern berth access and delay expansion. While regional rivals in Dubai and Iran, IFAWs rise with growing alarm. Environmental groups warn that dredging and spoil disposal are eroding the UNESCO-listed Mesopotamian marshes, with satellite imagery confirming localized habitat loss along the new container yard. Most international banks and insurers have kept their distance, citing unresolved legal risks and environmental liability, but international lawsuits and environmental destruction threaten the grand vision, leaving Iraq's superport suspended between regional dominance and the very real possibility of becoming a monument to ambition outpacing accountability. From the Basra Gas Company's $200 billion turnaround to the Grand Fa Port's ambition to rival Dubai and become the Singapore of the Middle East, these seven megaprojects reveal a nation racing from war-torn dependency to regional powerhouse. Across every entry, the pattern is clear. Iraq is converting decades of waste and isolation into energy autonomy, trade connectivity, and geopolitical leverage. Yet, the same projects are haunted by corruption scandals, tribal blockades, and legal battles, with billions lost or delayed at nearly every stage. The most shocking entries, like the 1,200-kilometer development road bypassing Iran and the Grand Fa port's 99 berth expansion, show Iraq is not just rebuilding, it's redrawing the map of Middle Eastern commerce and power. This list proves modern infrastructure is as much about political will and risk as concrete and steel. In the end, Iraq's mega-builds send shockwaves across the Gulf, signaling that the real battle for dominance is now fought not just by armies, but by cranes and corridors.